All right, seventh grade, welcome back. We are moving on to section 5.2. Just a reminder, uh, this afternoon you need to make sure you have submitted your Achieve Graphic Organizer um, as well as taken the 5.1 quiz. They're both due today. Uh, but we're moving on to section 5.2, which talks about how thermal energy is transferred. All right, so how is heat transferred? And I posted a second video I want you to watch. It's attached to this lecture um, posting as well. It's Mr. Anderson from Bozeman Science, who I think does a really good job of talking about um, different scientific topics, and he has one on heat. So I want you to watch that as well. Um, and he talks about the difference of heat versus heating. So heating is going to be the process of energy transferring from a warmer object or space to a cooler object or space. And heat is actually the amount of energy that transfers from that warmer object or space to the cooler one. So heating is the process and heat is the amount. Now we know that heat is transferring all the time. And we know this because if it wasn't true, then nothing would ever change temperature. But we also know, whoops, heat does not transfer randomly. It always goes in one direction, from the hotter area or space to the cooler one, and by one of three methods, conduction, convection, or radiation. And those are the three we are gonna look at today. All right, a little background information on atoms. We know from past sections we've covered that all matter is made up of atoms. They either are comprised of a single, single atoms bonded together, or atoms bonded in groups known as molecules. In either case, these atoms or molecules are always in motion. And in general, hotter atoms or molecules are going to move faster than colder ones. All right, so what do these atoms and molecules look like? In a solid, the uh, atoms are held together in a rigid configuration. There's a fixed shape and a fixed volume. In liquid and gas, they're not in rigid configurations. In liquid, there is no fixed shape, and it, but there is a fixed volume. In gas, there is no fixed shape and no fixed volume. And we're going to get into what that means when we get to, when we get to convection. All right. So what is conduction? And we're going to use this example of putting a pan on a stovetop and turning on the heat. We have metal that is sitting over the burner, the bottom of the pan, and that will be the first part of the pan that gets hot because it's in direct contact with the heat source. The atoms that are in the bottom of this pan will start to vibrate faster as they warm up. And as they gain that thermal energy and start to vibrate faster um, in place, they'll transfer that energy to particles surrounding them when they bump into those particles. And so we have a picture here of a candle flame and some sort of metal rod in the flame. And you can see here that closest to the flame, those um, atoms are moving a lot more than further away. They're still in their rigid structure. And as these uh, atoms are moving more and more, they're bumping into their neighboring atoms and transferring some of that kinetic energy over. And this transfer of energy continues to go throughout the conductive material until eventually the whole rod would be hot and all the molecules and all the atoms would be moving around like the ones we see up by the flame. All right, convection, so conduction, you have to have, the two objects have to be touching, meaning the hotter area or space has to be touching with the cooler area of space in order for this transfer to occur via conduction. Convection has to do with atoms or molecules that are in a fluid. And by fluid, we don't just mean liquid, we mean liquid or gas. Fluid meaning a substance where atoms and molecules can move around. And if you think back to our images here, in both the liquid and the gas, these um, atoms and molecules are moving around. So that's what they mean by fluid. And if we go back to our example of the pot, we have a pot on the stove. I wish I had a picture of a pot, but I don't. We have a pot on the stove, and the first water molecules inside that, uh, the water in the pot that are going to get hot, are the ones closest to the bottom of the pan. As the bottom of the pan heats up, 
the um, atoms in the pan are going to touch the atoms right up against them in the water and they're going to transfer some of that kinetic energy via conduction and those uh, molecules of water are going to heat up first. As those molecules heat up, what happens in fluids is as the, um, as the temperature increases, as the heat increases, the same amount of molecules spread out. So here we have nine water molecules in this amount of space, and once we add the heat, the amount of space that they occupy increases to this. So there's not any more water. It's still nine water molecules. They just are taking up more space. So what does it mean? It means that this hotter fluid becomes less dense. It means that this hotter fluid becomes less dense. And that less dense water uh, or um, gas, actually that less dense liquid or gas, is going to rise. And they're going to carry, as a result, it's going to carry the heat away from the bottom of the pan. And the cooler water or, or liquid or gas at the top is going to sink back down near the uh, heat source. And so this convection is creating this uh, cyclical motion in the fluid where the hotter liquid or gas is rising and the cooler liquid or gas is falling. And when that cooler liquid or gas falls down here, what's going to happen? It's going to heat up and it's going to rise. And as this, these um, hotter liquid or gas molecules come to the top, they're going to cool off, they're going to become more dense, and they're going to fall. So you have this circular motion, which we call a convection current, and that's what carries heat, that, that's what distributes heat through a fluid, through a liquid or a gas. All right, the last one we're going to talk about is radiation. Radiation um, is just the transmission of energy in the form of waves or particles. And we talked about electromagnetic radiation last year when we were talking about um, different forms of energy. And there are, different, there are different forms of radiation. You have visible light, you have x-rays, you have radio waves, which carry, um, obviously, radio signal through to your transistor radio. The type of radiation we're interested in here is called infrared radiation and that's heat and that's what we feel when we go up to a campfire you can feel the heat from the fire without touching it that's the same type of um, heat that you get when you're outside in the sun we're not touching the sun yet we feel the heat of the sun uh, if we're standing in a place where the sun's radiation is hitting us so unlike what makes radiation unique is that unlike conduction and convection which need um, a material to pass through, radiation doesn't. It can pass through empty space. It can pass through a material, but it also can pass through empty space. All right, that's the end of my lecture. I want to point out a couple things. Um, on Classroom, I have posted my doodle notes. If we were in class, you would be doing these, but since we're not, I just posted the completed copy um, and I like the way that these doodle notes summarize these three methods of heat transfer. So you have radiation, which is the energy transferring in waves. Um, you have convection here, which is showing you the water, the warmer water rising because it's less dense and the cooler, more dense water falling. And then over here with the hot pan handle, it's showing you conduction, which means that metal pan the heat is traveling up from the bottom through the rest of the pan as a result of conduction, as a result of those atoms bumping into one another. Um, all right, so that's the one image. The other image, again, it's showing you some different examples of convection, conduction, and radiation. So one we talked about, like we said, was the hot air balloon, where we have hot air rising and cooler air falling, and Mr. Anderson goes into this a little bit in his video. We also have convection that drives... Um, the transfer of heat in the mantle. So this is the part of the mantle where we have uh, magma or liquid rock. And we'll get into this in eighth grade, but this is what drives um, the movement of Earth's plates. In conduction, right, we have the example of a metal handle on a pan becoming hot. Or if you've ever gone to the beach on a sunny, on a hot day, you know the sand can get very hot. So it's going to be um, that heat transfer through direct touch, through direct contact. And then radiation, there, there does not require touching. In fact, there isn't touching. Um, so it's like, for
for instance, the sun, we feel the heat from the sun without touching it. We feel the heat from a fire or you can um, toast a marshmallow without actually having that marshmallow touch the fire. So just be, look at these, make sure you understand these. These are good summative notes. Um, I have the book images here. Go through and highlight your book. Your book kind of, I don't love the way your book talks about this section. That's why I kind of supplemented it with my own lecture notes um, or Google slide presentation. But this is what I want you to have highlighted. So make sure you have that highlighted. Um, there's a set of questions that are out there. I will be posting them. That'll say section 5.2 Q&A. I want you to answer those questions based off of this lecture, based off of the lecture for Mr. Anderson that I'm going to post, as well as your book, and that's due on Friday. And then you also need to fi uh, finish up this thermal energy online simulation. We did this on paper prior to leaving school. Um, so if you have that, I want you to take pictures of it um, and submit it. You can submit the images on the uh, assignment. Uh, your other option is you can type them in like I'm starting to type them in in different colors. So that way, this is just a good, um, again, it talked, this was more section 5.1, what is thermal energy, and then the next part of it, conduction, convection, and radiation. It gives some examples of that. Um, and since we did do that, I want us to get some credit for that. So make sure you have that turned in on Friday. Like I said, most of you should be done with this. Um, all right. I think that is it. Um, if you have any questions, I will be, I have office hours on Thursday morning at 11. You can always email me or put a question on the doc. Um, and I'm always checking that I will answer it. So Make sure you have whatever is due on Wednesday completed, and then there'll be a few things due on Friday as well, but those will be noted um, both on Google Classroom, the Science Google Classroom, as well as on the Classwork Homework Board. All right, I hope you guys have a great day. Talk soon. Bye.